Good morning, Christ beloved. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. What a good day to be gathered in this place. Welcome to all of you who are here in person, as well as everyone who is worshiping with us online today. It's an exciting day already. Egg exciting, haha. <laughs> We've had breakfast this morning, an egg hunt, 
Um, we are going to have some incredibly special music during worship today. We are also having a baby dedication of Amalia Jade Martinez. We are so excited about that. And then after worship, you're invited to stay around and have some delicious coffee outside and also to take pictures by our floral cross. I'd like to take a moment to ask you to please sign in. You've got some cards in the pew back, so you can either put those in the offering trays when they're passed a little bit later, or you can scan the QR code that's in your bulletin and sign in online. If you're worshiping with us online, there is a sign-in link in the description of this video. There is a lot of information in your bulletins about what's going on in the life of the church. You also see the insert about the Easter dedications. This year, due to supply chain issues, we don't have any lilies, as you can see, but in lieu of, of donating for that, we are giving to Micah 6 to provide care and compassion and tangible help to those in need, and so we are excited to be able to do that this year. This is a day of hope. This is a day of celebration. This is a day of resurrection and new life. So now let us center ourselves in that very good news and prepare for worship as we listen to the prelude. Early on the first day of the week, the women went to the tomb where he, Jesus had been buried, only to find that the stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. 
Friends, we gather here as Christ's disciples on the first day to celebrate the good news of the gospel. Jesus Christ has risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Living God, we are in joyful awe that Christ is risen. You show us time and time again that nothing can separate us from your love, not even death. Some days, even in the face of new life, we despair. We doubt the power of peace rather than work for it. We judge and shun instead of welcoming the prodigal and searching for the lost sheep. Your forgiveness, O oh God, is a gift. 
transform us by the good news of the resurrection. Loving God, before we call, you answer. Before we speak, you know our words. Let there be peace among all nations. Let there be no more war. Let sounds of weeping and cries of distress turn to shouts of joy and laughter. Let infants grow and thrive. Let the old be heard and cherished. Let every person find a home and have good things to eat. Let the wolf and the lamb live in peace. Let no one hurt or destroy another. Show us, O oh God, the new heaven and the new earth you've promised, and open our eyes to see the new light of this day. Open our lips to tell of the empty tomb. Open our hearts to believe the good news. Let our lives be proof of the living Christ with all of our words and actions, our love and service bearing witness to your resurrection power. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The children will come forward. We need a little bit of room because I have something for us to look at. Okay, let's so make sure everyone can see. Hi, Miss Avery, come on up. Okay, I have a bag. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. White bag. Uh, yeah, white bag. Is it a puzzle? It might be a puzzle. I don't know. Let's look. See, I'm gonna pull something out it's of it. It's definitely a puzzle. What is that? It's a puzzle. You piece. think it's a puzzle piece? You guys are way smarter than I gave you credit for. All right, so we've got one. <laughs> what do we have? Another puzzle. Two. Three. Oh, okay. There was. I had a plan. And here we go. All right. How many is that? Four. Five. Six. All right. Do you guys think you can make sense of this? Uh-huh. Let's try to figure it out together. Hmm. I think this. I think that one might go right there. Hey, I think it did that good. You think you did a great job. Let's. Uh, Miss Chelsea, you're saying that. I'm so sorry. Excuse me. Okay. Probably. You can do a puzzle. I'm sure we can all do the puzzle. Ah. Scarlett, I think this one goes down here. I, I can't 
that one goes right here. Yeah, Harris, what do you have? That one? <gasps> Beautiful. Okay, look. Oh my gosh, look, we're figuring it's it out. It's a cross. It is a cross. It makes a cross. How many pieces did we have? We have one, one two, two, three, four, five, six. It's six. Six that pieces. And they're purple. And uh -huh. you know what we just had? We had six weeks of purple. But it's upside lit. down. It's not upside down for, for us. <laughs> Happy Easter, everyone. <laughs> We're done. It's over. <laughs> so this is purple, but what happens if we turn it around? It's white. It's white. Help me turn all the pieces around, guys. I, I, oh. I, I, I am confused because this way is Here, it's going to go this way. There we go. Yeah. We figured it out. Great job. All right. All right, Matilda, put it back. Let's see. Matilda, it's so we have a white cross. It turned from six purple pieces into one white cross. Because now Lent is over and we are celebrating Easter. Last week we celebrated Palm Sunday, where Jesus went into Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And then through the week, lots of really scary things happened to Jesus. But guess what happened on the third day? I don't know. You don't know what happened? No. Harris, do you know what happened? No one knows what happened to Jesus on the third day. Oh, he died. He died, but then what happened on the third day? Uh, 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 he, he rose died. from the dead. He rose from the dead. Hooray! He rose from the dead. And guys, that is why we are Christians, because we believe that Jesus rose from the dead. And, and, and he died. And he died, but he rose from the dead. So we're going to pray now, okay? Will you repeat after me? I, I, no, we're not going to fight over the cross. All right, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for loving us and showing us how to love each other. Amen. All right, friends, that was more fun than I've had in years. <laughs> Beautiful. And now if um, the family of Amalia Jade Martinez would come forward, we're going to have her parents, Jessica and Alondra, and also her godparents, Jordan and Becky come forward. As the family of God, we rejoice in God's good gift of life. We join Sorry, guys. We join Jessica and Alondra in embracing Amalia Jade Martinez with open arms. As Jesus welcomed little children with words of blessing, we acknowledge God's limitless love already at work in her. And come to pledge ourselves in covenant to nurture her into fullness of life. Hear this reading from Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. So now I'm going to ask you, Alondra and Jessica, some questions. Um, and. I would ask you to respond by saying, we do with God's help. And you'll have your turn in just a minute. Jessica and Alondra, do you receive this child as a precious gift from God and seek God's grace and this community's support in caring for this child? Do you covenant to guide and nurture Amalia by word and deed with love and prayer? Do you promise before God and this community to raise this child in the faith, worship with her regularly, 
teach her to pray and lead her into a loving relationship with God? The church gladly joins with you in Holy Covenant for the care and nurture of Amalia. So congregation, please stand in body or in spirit. And this is where y'all will join in too. <laughs> Do you promise as a community of faith to surround this family with your love for the strengthening of their life together? If so, by saying we do with God's help. We do with God's help. Do you promise to tell this child the good news of God's love, to help her learn Christ's ways and to lead her in service to God and neighbor? Amalia, I dedicate you in the name of the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. May God give you a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and might, a spirit of joy and thankfulness, both now and forever. Amen. And now if you will turn in your hymnals to number 364, we're going to pray together the blessing that is found there. O oh God, as a mother comforts her children, you strengthen, sustain, and provide for us. We come before you with gratitude for the gift of this child, for the joy that has come into this family, and for the grace with which you surround them and all of us. As a father cares for his children, so you continually look upon us with compassion and goodness. Pour out your spirit. Enable your servants to abound in love and establish our homes in holiness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You did, or you might want to stand up because I'm going to walk her up and down the aisle. I'll keep her very, very still if that's okay. And this is a dedication certificate for y'all. Y'all have to see this face. Amalia, these people are gonna be the ones who they join with your parents and their, your family in loving you and teaching you all about God and what it is to love your neighbor. And when you're ready to be baptized, they're going to encourage and support you these people here in these pews, but then also people who aren't even here yet. That's the church. And I hope that you always find peace in the church, just like the peace you are experiencing right now as you sleep so soundly. I hope we all feel this kind of peace. You are loved, you are accepted, you are welcomed, you are celebrated here. Bless you, Amalia.
gospel reading this morning is from the gospel according to John, chapter 20. If you care to follow reading in one of the Bibles uh, in front of you, John chapter 20, beginning with verse 1. I think it's fair to say that this is John's shout to God. He's been building up through these first uh, 19 chapters of this uh, gospel, uh, telling us the story of Jesus, uh, his crucifixion, and now this. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood there weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabuna, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. May the word of God speak to us. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, pour out your spirit on us that we hear the words you have for us this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. It is such a joyful day. I have been abuzz all day, I don't know about y'all. It's exciting, Christ lives again, love lives. We are celebrating new life and resurrection with our Easter finest. I have seen so many beautiful bright colors, ties and dresses and flowers everywhere. The beautiful floral cross is outside with more and more flowers added all through the morning. And we are back together worshiping in person for the first time since 2019. It is a good day, church. We're excited. We're happy to be here. 
But the scripture passage from John telling the story doesn't quite match that feeling of elation that we may be feeling today. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed. It starts out quiet and dark. The significance of the day wasn't clear yet. The resurrection was already real, but it had not yet been realized by those who would be the first witnesses. Mary ran and told the others. She didn't tell them about the joy and the awe of resurrection, though. She didn't know about that yet. She shared her concern that Jesus' body is gone and no one knows where his body is. Can you imagine the sense of panic and dread that she must have felt? Think about when you misplaced something very important, <laughs> that pit in your stomach that grows. I think that times a hundred or a thousand is probably what Mary was feeling that day, not knowing where Jesus' body was. And so Peter and the other disciple ran to the tomb to see what she was talking about. They assessed the situation, and then they went home. A little anticlimactic. But Mary stayed. She stayed there in that in-between time of dawn as night turned to day, and she wept. The resurrection was already real, but Mary didn't realize it yet. She wept, and with good reason. She couldn't believe that someone had moved Jesus' body. Already she was grieving his death, and she cried again because now this. What next? When will the injustices stop? When will the awful things stop piling up on top of each other? We have asked ourselves those questions. And we know that Christ's resurrection doesn't magically heal a hurting world. We know that after spending the last two Easter's apart. We know that after war still rages on in Ukraine, we know that the resurrection isn't a magic fix as people are still experiencing homelessness, as God's good creation groans amidst climate change, reports that are quite grim. We know this as hope sometimes feels far enough away that it seems totally impossible. And I suspect that Mary was feeling pretty hopeless that morning. And then she looked again. We hear that she was weeping and then she bent over to look in the tomb and saw the two angels in white. They spoke and then she turned and saw Jesus. But as we know, she didn't yet know it was him. I saw a tweet this morning commenting on this resurrection story, and the person said that their favorite part of this account is that Mary thought Jesus was the gardener, because that meant that he was just messing around with plants until someone showed up. All through Lent, we focused on different spiritual disciplines practices that prime our eyes and our hearts to perceive Christ in front of us. Practices that help us to be attuned to the ways that God is with us already and to listen for the call of God. Mary listened that morning. And when Jesus said her name, she knew it was him. It became clear. Jesus was alive. Somehow, death was destroyed. Hope was restored. The resurrection was real. And she realized what was happening right there in front of her. And we are all here today, partly because of what happened next. Jesus told her to go and tell the others, and that is just what she did. 
She went to the disciples, announced, I have seen the Lord, and told them the story of the risen Christ. And then that story was told again and again and again. And that story is still being told and witnessed because resurrection still happens. Every single one of us in here, whether we are currently aware of it or not, has a story of encountering the risen Christ in some form or fashion. In last week's Sunday school class, Susan asked us to think about a recent time when we experienced the good news, when we were witnesses to it. And then we had to tell each other about that time in 10 words or less. Can you imagine? That was a hard assignment, Susan. <laughs> 10 words or less to be that concise with something so big. And it was a powerful thing for us to think through our own stories of recently witnessing the good news. And then it was powerful to tell those stories it was just as powerful to hear the stories of everyone else in that room, especially since it is usually through other people that we experience the risen Christ. We all see the risen Christ in different places, around dinner tables and conference tables and classrooms and in offices, in border towns and big cities, in homeless shelters, in prisons, in, on walking trails. We see the risen Christ in tears of laughter and of weeping, in Zoom meetings and in warm embraces, in reconciliations where there seemed to be absolutely no hope for repair. We see the risen Christ when we stand up for the least of these, when we wash the feet of our neighbor, when our feet are washed, when we break bread together. Minister and writer Debbie Thomas says that the question isn't what should other people believe, but rather, what do you believe? Why is the resurrection of Jesus essential to you? What does Christ's rising look like in your life? And those are questions I think we could all carry forth this week. What do you believe? What is the resurrection for you? What does Christ's rising look like in your life? I shared last week in the Sunday school class that my recent experience of seeing, witnessing the good news was hope and healing after horrors, because I had heard the story of some refugee women down in Los Fresnos, not too far from the border, that had been through such horrendous things in their lives, but they were being ministered to and brought back to full life, to thriving, through the ministry down there. I believe that because Jesus has been raised, death doesn't have the last word, and that love speaks loudest and last. For me, the resurrection of Jesus is essential because he's living in each one of us as the risen body of Christ. Whatever that means, it's a mystical, mysterious sort of thing. And in my own life, Christ's rising looks like holding on to hope even when that's the most ridiculous thing to do. When everything around me tells that me that that is not logical. Christ rising, Christ's rising reminds me that resurrection starts in the dark 
when it is already real, but I haven't realized it yet. It looks like healed relationships. It looks like folks like y'all in this room and y'all at, in the rooms in your homes working alongside each other to make God's love real in tangible ways. It looks like the mystery of God's peace and forgiveness and justice and grace being real despite everything that might tell us otherwise. It's early, still on the first day of the week. We've seen the empty tomb. We know what it means. The resurrection is real. We realize that. And so let us be like Mary. Let us go and tell with our mouths and with our lives. I have seen the Lord. Today is Resurrection Sunday. You may have picked up on that. Since we've sung about it, read about it, heard about it, but what do you know about it? What is resurrection anyway? However one defines it or understands it, resurrection boils down to this, something has drastically changed. Things aren't like they used to be. What was inactive becomes energized. To follow Jesus requires resurrection your resurrection and mine. We are changed to become more loving people, sharing our time, our influence, our resources for God's sake. Let's share our offerings, signs of our renewed life in Christ.
Let us pray. Loving God, we come today with joy as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let us be filled with faith and hope for peaceful lives for all humankind. And may our faith and hope lead us to right actions to achieve the peace and love that we enjoy for all people of the world. In Christ's name we pray, amen.
Friends, this is the joyful feast for the people of God. And I'm feeling my free will Baptist roots. I want to shout. This is awesome. I won't. I'll spare you. <laughs> Siblings, this is the climax of the service. This is where we all come together and we are reminded that we have been made new creatures because we dine from a feast that does not end. This is the feast that feeds us and fills us, but leaves us hungry for justice. We are fed here so that we may go out into the world and feed others. Siblings, let us never forget that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this, this is, is my body, body which is for you. you. Do this, this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. According to his commandment, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. Loving Father, these emblems we share this morning are not a toast to the memory of a long-lost friend, but are an expression of our fellowship with a living companion. We thank you today, not only that Jesus died for our sins as our loving Savior, but that he was raised on the third day so that we might triumph over anything that would hold us back from walking in newness of life with him who is our living Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, I'm going to give instructions. We haven't done this in a minute. <laughs> our lovely servers will give you a tray. The first tray is going to have a piece of bread in it. It is homemade. It is delicious. It is gluten-free. You may take your bread and eat it. Pass the tray to your neighbors. You put your empty cup in your pew back. It's in a cup, by the way. Then you will get a tray of juice. Now the tray of juice, you will take, you will hold the cup until everyone has their juice and we will take it together. Clear as mud? God will help us, don't worry.
the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of new life. We are so grateful to see so many of you in our pews today, and we know there are so many of you watching online today and joining us virtually. We are so happy that we are able to be gathered together today. If you are in need of a church home that will challenge you and that will love you, we would love to be that here at University Christian Church. So please feel free to come forward during the singing of the final hymn, which we will all now rise and sing together. by the floral cross. God's beloved, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We are all witnesses to the resurrection, messengers of the gospel. May God grant you strength through the Spirit. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith. And may you know, share, and rejoice in the immeasurable love of God. Go in peace to love and serve. Go forth and tell the good news. Amen. <laughs>